Hi, it's Kirby Summers, and I welcome you to the Epstein Project Podcast. Today is August 25th. I was not going to do a podcast today. In fact, I was going to try to just catch up with some personal things. But, um, you know, I wanted to sort of uh, respond to what appears to be people that I see on Twitter talking about the lawsuit and the case against Prince Andrew. And also, you know, when there's talk of settlement, um, some people become very upset and agitated in their tweets and they say, oh, well, so-and-so shouldn't take a settlement. So I'm gonna be talking about that, bringing you up to date with what's happening with the lawsuit, what can be expected uh, with the Prince Andrew case, what my prediction is, and a few other things that, oh, like the sale, you know, the sale, uh, there's a sale today for the next, well, now, as of now, 22 hours uh, on my book, Ghislaine Maxwell, an unauthorized biography on Amazon. The links are all on my, um, on my Twitter page. I, I might as well add them to uh, the part below. And before I get started, don't forget to like the video, like the video, subscribe, um, because I always forget to do that. So um, the way the law works, and you know, we don't make the law, right? I mean, if we want to be completely blunt and honest, the people who make the law are the wealthy people. These are the people who either have compromised judges or compromised politicians or they have super PACs and you know they go in there and they change the law to make it um, agreeable to them. But in any event, when there is a civil matter, the law dictates how the party that has been injured and injured is the legal definition and injured could be the person was raped or the person was in a hit and run or even in the civil lawsuit that was brought against um, OJ Simpson by the family of Ron Goldman. That was a civil lawsuit and the way a judge decides a civil lawsuit is by awarding a financial Uh, settlement. So whether or not that settlement happens when the trial begins, in the middle of a trial, toward the end of a trial, the goal, as far as the judge is concerned and the attorneys are concerned, on both sides of the fence, the plaintiff and the defendant, the goal is to settle the matter. And the only way to settle that matter is a financial payment. Now, let's take uh, the lawsuit that Virginia Giffray brought against Glenn Maxwell in 2015 for defamation. Glenn tried to fight it. She played dirty. She had her friends in the media write really vicious, nasty things again about about. Virginia, who had taken so much from these people. Um, The thing is, is that while Ghislaine Maxwell was in the courtroom, I mean, it's the only time that I have heard during my research for my books, I came across the fact that Jeffrey Epstein told her specifically that she was quote, end quote, stupid, pursuing Virginia Giffray. Why? Because there is discovery, right? So that Glenn Maxwell had to appear for a deposition. In fact, she was deposed twice. Um, She lied during the time that she was being deposed. And today that has now uh, been used against her in the federal case. However, what Glenn Maxwell did not anticipate was the staying power of Virginia Giffray. And um, at some point, Ghislaine had enough. She was either pressured 
by, you know, the people that she works for, because in my opinion, she works for an intelligence agency or two to settle because there was just too much information being released and it was going to ultimately compromise other people. So she settled. She had a townhouse that was given to her by Jeffrey Epstein and the chain of title on that is is has been changed uh, even at the Department of Buildings in New York. So it really belonged to Leslie Wexner. He had given it to Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein lived there for a while. Then he gave it to Ghislaine Maxwell. She made it her home. It's a, a very fancy townhouse on the Upper East Side, very close to where Ghislaine, I'm sorry, very close to where Jeffrey Epstein used to live. And um, she sold it for $15 million in order to settle her lawsuit with Virginia Dufresne, meaning that she had to pay Virginia a substantial amount of money. And after that, um, she started um, spending time with the man who basically became her husband in 2016 so that it was settled. When I see people being upset, this can't be settled, nobody should take this money, the only way there is no money involved is when there is a criminal procedure. So now in the case against Glenn Maxwell by the United States of America, which only includes, again, only four people and only for a short amount of time and only for a, a limited fraction of what actually happened to these four women, three of them were minors, one was an adult, She's not being tried for everything, okay? So that is a, a federal case that has been brought against Ghislaine Maxwell. And in the federal case, nobody's gonna win any money. Ghislaine Maxwell will be, well, she's taken pretty much the fall for, what I'm gonna call it what it is. I'm gonna call it the cabal. She has taken the fall for the cabal. Um, so much happened, as you guys know, with the case against Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, I was on a talk show the other day, and and I've also tweeted this, that um, one day before Jeffrey Epstein died, I think it was one or two days, I would have to go look at my notes, he tried to plea it out. Um, he was gonna take a plea, the condition was that he was going to name the men who had paid to be with the trafficked children. Now, it wasn't just children, because I want to be very, very clear, you know, the information that's coming out, either from mainstream media, and even some of the documentaries and other podcasts. And I mean, it just drives me insane, because it, it wasn't just minors. As we know, there were some adult women, and by the way, there were different ethnicities, and there were also boys, and there were also men. Um, so it was a broad, and it, and it wasn't just, um, to go back to my point for one second, it wasn't just socioeconomically deprived um, minors. It was people from different walks of life. So you didn't have to be dirt poor to be considered uh, a mark. In fact, I make it a point in, on Twitter to state that Ghislaine Maxwell wanted uh, Paris Hilton, one of the wealthiest women in the world, uh, for Jeffrey. So she hunted indiscriminately, allegedly, okay? Um, so with the, the lawsuit, uh, again, there's only a monetary da damage. It could happen before the lawsuit begins. It could happen in the middle. It could happen at the end. Some people, they, they, they try to get away with showing that the other person is wrong. But we've already had Virginia successfully sue Glenn Maxwell and successfully have her 
settle. And it was settled out of court for an undisclosed amount. Um, so she, you know, she's she's not really allowed to talk about Ghislaine Maxwell anymore. Because once you settle a case, you settle a case. It would seem to me that um, David Boyce brought the lawsuit against Prince Andrew, not only because there was the, the expiration of the Child Victims' Rights Act, which expired, I believe, um, sometime last weekend or last week or a few days ago. And if she didn't sue at this moment in time, she would have lost that window of opportunity. I, I believe that he also believes that Prince Andrew will settle. I am saying this because even though uh, it's my understanding that David Boyce attempted to speak with Prince Andrew for five years prior to bringing this lawsuit and Prince Andrew ignored him, uh, not even giving him the courtesy of, oh yeah, I'll talk to you, which is basically what he did when he was on the BBC interview with Emily Mait Maitlis, um, Matlis, I, I think that's how to pronounce her name. So Prince Andrew, during the course of this really horrific interview, I don't know who gives him advice, but he's just got terrible uh, PR people around him. Uh, he basically said, yes, if the FBI needs me, need me to talk, I will be happy to, I will be, and, and uh, he said, similar afterwards and his attorney i believe at one point issued a statement but here's the thing prince andrew has a tendency to say something and do something entirely different and it boggles the mind because you know i remember the interview uh, and i remember um so many of the things that he said so for example when he was questioned as to whether or not he regretted meeting Jeffrey Epstein, he was like, oh, no, not because of the contact, so on and so forth. Well, you know, time has gone on. It's a year and nine months, so almost two years since the horrific interview. I think it's almost two years. That's amazing. Um, but, you know, we have discovered that he has been in business, I, I'm air quotes, business, with very disreputable figures, with um, gun, you know, people who sell guns. Uh, what do you, I mean, you know, somebody, just people who, who launder money. And then he had a real estate transaction that really looked like like a money laundering transaction so that the more he stays in the public eye i mean not only has he been completely um i would think reputationally no one can be more hurt than prince andrew at this point so what will happen is i almost think that there is something happening now because the case literally begins in September. There is a, a court date for the beginning of this case. I believe, it's my belief that he is communicating, his attorneys are communicating with David Boyes. We have not heard from Virginia. I would think that Virginia is being very quiet now. This is probably the most historic negotiation uh, it, it, of all time. And specifically because it involves uh, trafficked persons, and it's only recent. It's only recently that we've been able to talk about human trafficking, the trafficking of minors, and I see my Twitter blow up with victims, people who remember being sexually molested when they were just little kids you know, five, six, some younger. I, I had uh, somebody tell me that she noticed some signs in her grandbaby, who's not even a year old, you know, who 
it's just, it's, this is the first time that people are coming together, those who were sexually abused when they were children. And up until now, the only people who really stepped forward were those who came and, and made claims against the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church has historically made very small settlements and then moved the offending priest to another location. So it's not even like the offending priest was then kicked out of the church. And at no moment in time did anything criminal um, happen to these people. But it's only now that, let's say me, I was sexually um, molested as a child by my mother's boyfriend. And then I was sold into um, human trafficking by my older sister. She's 14 years older than I am. And that was an enormous breach of trust, which destroyed my life for many, many years. Um, and I have my story in, in, in my memoir, which is on my website, The Billionaire's Woman. And my website is kirbysummers.com. Summers, S-O-M-M-E-R-S. -E so I, I, I have noticed also other women like myself who somehow ended up uh, being trafficked or becoming somebody's sex slave. I, you know, this is, this is like um, the floodgates have opened so that this lawsuit against Prince Andrew is historic on so many levels, not just because he's a prince, but because it really puts this on the map. You know, this is a legitimate thing. So I want to go back to the fact that Jeffrey Epstein had a girl at the time, she was a minor, who he purchased from her parents in her hometown. And this is Nadia Marcinko. She's changed her name. Her initial name was something a little bit more complicated. But everything that you guys have read and everything I have read has been consistent as far as Nadia. He bought her and he told everyone that she was his sex slave. And if you look at court records, you will see that Nadia, he had Nadia participate at different times and sometimes at the same time when Ghislaine Maxwell was allegedly participating, when these minors were being sexually abused. So that if you've read Virginia Giuffre's, um book, her memoir, which was given to the court as an exhibit when she was suing a uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, you will see that even Virginia met Nadia. And so that means that Nadia was the same time frame as Prince Andrew. So if, if Jeffrey Epstein told everyone, oh, Nadia is my sex slave, and he was known pretty much to have an airplane that everybody knew was called the Lolita Express, Everybody knew that he had an island called Pedophile Island and or Orgy Island. And Prince Andrew, who has been hanging around Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, at least from what the public has known for over a decade, right? So I think that he's only owned to being connected with Epstein from 1999, but then he didn't say goodbye until 2010, um, right after he came out of jail. And, you know, he went there for some more parties. Come on, you don't have a dinner party at Jeffrey Epstein's house and it's only a dinner party, right? At some point, he's going to have somebody rubbing your feet. And that's how, and that's how it, it, it sort of becomes uh, an assault. So for Prince Andrew to say with a straight face that he did not know and did never noticed anything off about Jeffrey Epstein's home because to him, it seemed like a railroad station. That's just a, you know, that's another lie. 
it, it, you know, it's, it's really very sad to see somebody who is born into the royal family, a family that one is, I guess, you're supposed to respect them and look up to them, lie and, and be so careless and, and, and be so, have no remorse for what his participation in Jeffrey Epstein's um, trafficking ring was all about. And of course, we can thank his friend, Glenn Maxwell, because that really was his friend. So I'm just gonna add a few other points that I know I've tweeted about, and maybe you guys have to hear it. There was a time that Glenn was trying to resurrect her destroyed reputation. You know, her reputation has had a couple of hits. The One of the biggest ones was when her father fell or was pushed off the yacht that he named the Lady Galen on November 5th, 1991. And, you know, it, in a matter of what, a day or two, the banks were pounding on their doors and basically it was discovered that the man was a thief and he had been pretty much using money that didn't belong to him and in fact she was part of selling something that was not hers to sell. I have that in my book, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, Predator Spy. Um, and actually, I also have it in Galen Maxwell, an unauthorized biography. So um, in order to resurrect her life, she started going out with people like the Kennedys, um, not just John F. Kennedy Jr. There's another one that I write about in my book. And um, she started to also date once he was no longer married to Fergie. She started to date and be seen at fashion shows with Prince Andrew. So come on, their friendship goes back a long, long time. And, um, you know, she just, I hate to say that she used him, but because they are very, very good friends, but you know, she has, I, I have to say at this point that she has nothing, there's nothing inside, right? I, I mean, whatever that word is for people who are, they're psychotic, I suppose, in my opinion, she has nothing inside. Her father had nothing inside. And so maybe Prince Andrew seems to be the same way. He has nothing inside. They feel no remorse. They could hurt someone and, and they don't um, feel, you know, they don't feel they've done anything wrong. They just continue to stand their ground. So to wrap this up, I believe, and I'm curious to know if you believe that Prince Andrew will settle because, and it'll be done quietly. Perhaps there will be a brief statement by Virginia's attorney, David Boyes. Maybe there will be no statement by the palace. I, I doubt that the palace will put out a statement. And then the whole thing, at least with Prince Andrew, will stop being news because I've got to think that the man doesn't want to be in the news anymore and his family his mother is 95 years old his brother will be king soon and or his nephew and they're, they're you know they're not going to be as tolerant of him as his mother has been so um that's my take so I'm I, I would love to hear your take will he settle Will he not settle? Why? What, what's your thinking behind it? And do you finally understand, I hope, why there has to be a financial settlement? That's the way the court decides uh, a case is settled in the civil, in a civil courtroom. That is not really the decision of, of somebody who has been wronged. And in this case, it's Virginia Giuffray. All right, so um, again, for you know, just a 24 hour period, Glenn Maxwell, an unauthorized biography is on sale, 24 hour period, because I want everybody who has not been buying it, I mean, and so many people have, but 
I really want this out because while I was working on this book, so much was being scrubbed. And then Jeffrey Epstein, Predator Spy, finally, I was able to make it through the Amazon doors and it is a paperback as well. There, It's also on Kindle. It's, these books are also on my website. So if you don't want to use Amazon, you don't have to. You can just come to my website, kirbysummers.com and you can pick up my books there. Okie doke, I am going to wrap this up now and say thank you, thank you, thank you for, for being incredibly supportive, not only of me, but of each other. It's We've created like this great community and I'm so happy to be part of it. Okay, talk soon, bye.